All righty. Well, good evening, everyone. Good to see you all. You all looking great, smiling away. All right. Bless the Lord. Another good day, I hope. Good week, I hope. Amen. Well, hey, let's uh, let's start off with prayer because um, I don't want to say anything that he doesn't want me to say, and I'm sure he won't let me, but, you know, sometimes that flesh gets in the way, so. All right. Father God, we just uh, come before you this evening. Uh, Lord, we thank you for uh, just the opportunity to come and to be here again, Lord. Um, uh, so often we take for granted, Lord, just the freedom to be able to come in here and to study your word and learn and help us grow. Um, God, just be with us tonight, Lord. Um, God, Holy Spirit, just speak to our hearts. Uh, help us to hear what we need to hear. Uh, Lord, help me to say what you need me to say. And God, help us just to uh, truly, Lord, to respond in the way that you want us to respond, Lord, um, through our lives each and every day, Lord, wherever our day takes us, Lord, wherever our week takes us, uh, Lord, the people we come in contact with. Father, we just um, we want to impact this kingdom for you. And Lord, we ask that you would just continue to help us grow as we draw closer to you and bring you glory. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, I apologize. We don't have notes tonight. Um, and I will tell you, in in all honesty, I was I was doing something and getting my notes ready. And I was like, hey, I got to put my notes for them to get ready. And I totally forgot. And then tonight, I'm putting this podium right here. And I realized I have no notes. <laughs> so um, anyway, so I apologize for that. But uh, all right. So um, just a quick note. Um, I'm going to be gone next week. Um, my boss is coming. I've got to travel with him a little bit. So um, Brother Eddie is going to fill in for me. Um, so he will do a great job as usual. <laughs> All right, uh, if you got your Bibles, um, either on your phone or your actual Bible, um, First Peter, we're going to continue in there, and yes, we will get all the way through First Peter, um, and I, um, I, you know, I don't want to say I want to hurry, but I do want to get through, but I do also want us to, you know, understand what God wants us to get out of these particular areas, and uh, anyway... All right, least, uh, we're going to start at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13, and I believe we have the ESV translation. All right, um, so before I even dive in there, you know, on some of your Bibles, I don't know if you have little subheadings or subtitles in there, but it says submission to authority. And even just saying that, it kind of makes a negative thing. Um, because, I mean, you just look at it and you're like, it just sounds negative, but it's not. And so even from the get-go tonight, hopefully what we're going to read and what we're going to just talk about, you don't see as a negative. And I hope you don't see really anything in the Bible as a negative. Hopefully you see it as something that God has put in his word, something that can help us as we live, as we draw closer to him. And sometimes I found, as I'm even studying this, that We've got to, I think I said it last week a little bit, and I may even say it in my notes here, but we've got to take the, um, and I hope this sounds right, we've got to take America and Christianity and not put them side by side, because <laughs> they're not, even though a lot of people like to say that. But um, it's a great country and a great place to live, but following God is not always, uh, you know, the American way. And so, anyway, that's here nor there. Here we go. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using their freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God, honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor, servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when, 
Mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Amen. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of info. Um, a lot of what I, I'm just going to share tonight is really, um, I didn't do, um, I did do a ton of research, <clears throat> but I didn't take a lot of it. I just kind of read, and I, I kind of, I, I really, I, I just love this because I feel like this is a way we need to live in a way that we can make a difference in in our lives. Um, because every time um, I stand up here and every time I read the word, I want to view it as you know, what can I do to bring glory to God? And secondly, what do I need to hear that God wants me to hear to help me draw closer to him? Because, um, our, you know, we don't know everything, and I continually daily find things that I don't know. And so when I go to read God's word, I'm like, God, what do I need to see from here, and what can help me understand this? Um, so anyway, that, that's kind of the way I view that, and I hope you see that when you guys read your Bibles, when you're going through there, not just to check it off as reading it, but to take those scriptures and to read those things and say, okay, what can I learn from this? God, what do you have for me today? All right, so be subject or submissive for the Lord's sake, first of all, in verse 13. Um, be submissive. Um, you know, what we do and how we live as believers is not for us. And that's one of the first things that jumped out at me. It's he's telling us, Peter is telling us, this is what I want you to do. Be subject, be submissive for the Lord's sake to every human institution. And we'll get down there and, and talk about them a little more, but it's for the Lord's sake. It's not for ours. And I think we need to remember that because that's what really prompted me to talk about like Christianity and America is not the same in the same sentence because um, what we do in America so much nowadays is like if it doesn't, if it infringes on my rights, then I get upset or get, get mad. And that's not the way because you're talking about here where God says, he says, be a servant, be submissive. You say that to someone nowadays and they're going to think you're crazy. But that's what God asks us to do. And I, I, I don't know why we would want to do it any other way. But also, I find it sometimes it's a struggle because that mentality of if, if it's my right, then I can do it, it you know, it's, it's just totally ingrained our society. And, and we see that, and it envelops some of your thinking without you even knowing it. And you're like, okay, so that's when I say we got to go to God's Word and say, okay, what does this say about this particular subject? Because I've grown up with certain things, I've heard certain things, and I've seen certain things, and it's, it's, um, it's been ingrained in my mind to think a certain way, but is that God's way of thinking? Is that what he wants me to see? Is that how I need to see that? Um, <clears throat> he is, for the Lord's sake, that first passage right there, just to remember that he is why we do what we do, and why we say what we say, and why we live like we live. Um, the nation of believers that um, Peter was speaking to at this time they were facing much persecution through Nero. Um, they were even being killed. They were being tortured. They were being uh, just countless things. And so they were needing help. They were needing a place, just like us. Not We didn't, were obviously not facing death, but they were needing help and living and asking, how do we respond to this? Our leaders, the leaders of those, the Roman nation was Nero, was trying to kill us. How do we respond to that? We found our faith in Christ. Now, how do we respond to that? How do we live the way Jesus wants us to live? 
So remember what, <clears throat> excuse me, what Jesus said, and Peter's going to know this because he was there when they asked him about the greatest commandment. They said, what's the greatest, greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so the people that were dispersed at this time were asking, okay, how do we do this? And Peter, who had heard that, was, like, was beginning to tell them, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to respond. Um, and one of the first kind of points here is what we say and do cannot be taken lightly. Um, how you live can't be, can't be taken lightly. Um, I, I think about all the places we go. I think about all the things we do, all the people we come in contact with. And a lot of these things are so God-ordained. Um, we can't just, um, even driving here tonight, I was thinking, um, you know, you, have, you show up to church Wednesday, you show up to church Sunday, but during the week, you know, are we so intent on hearing God and seeing God move in our lives? Are we paying attention to the people that we come in contact with? Um, because he says here, be subject to the Lord for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who, be, who do good. People are watching. Um, people don't come to Christ when we treat them bad, when we treat them disrespectful, when we treat them arrogantly, when we're prideful, when we're selfish. People don't come to Christ that way. And I, I feel like I say that a lot, even in, in my own conversations, because um, people are watching that. You can tell our society is looking for answers. They're trying to find it everywhere. They're trying to find answers in relationships, in substances. They're trying to find it in you know, in money, in jobs, in positions, in titles, all of those things, people are searching and they're looking around for the answer. And I think it's not until people see authenticity with people that follow Christ, um, people are going to come to him. Obviously, the Holy Spirit draws them to it, but by them seeing an alternative to the way the world lives through your life allows them to, okay, there's something else out there that might be the answer. Everybody else is saying this, everybody else is saying that, but I see this person living this way, and I want what they have. I want something different like that. Um, my wife Lisa was sick today from work, and uh, she said a few people from her job were texting her and said, hey, it's just different when you're not here today. It's been different today. And I was like, hey, babe, that's great, because you're making a difference where you're at. You know, do people miss you when you're gone there? And I'm not saying we do it for that. But I'm saying that by your lifestyle and by the impact that we're leaving, you can see God's deeds, we can see what God's doing, and we can glorify God. And it's a great place to be. So for the Lord's sake, be submissive to, for every human institution. Um, so I am going to kind of challenge you tonight is, um, what do you think that looks like? What do you think being submissive to every human institution looks like? I'm just kind of looking for answers, and, and I'll walk around. I'll carry the mic. You won't even have to come up here. But what, what do you think that looks like? And just for those online so, th so they can hear you. Well, you know, I watch a lot of TBN, and what they've been saying in the last six <clears throat> months is we have been too submissive. We don't stand up when something like abortion killing all these babies, and we just sit back and do nothing. I'm having a problem with that. We need to speak up, but in a loving way. That's how I feel. But Christians just sit down and let, you know, the schools take our flags down, mm -hmm. take our um, commandments down, and we don't do anything. I'm very confused about that. Okay. What? Oh, I'm out of camera. They can still hear me. Okay. Oh. All right. What else do you think? I'm just looking for ideas. Just to, to your point real quick, I, I think that, I, I mean, I do agree we need to speak up, but the problem is what you said it was is too many people speak up with an attitude, and too many people speak up with... Yes, and, and that's why I said, I, speaking to what you said, it's great that we do that with love, and we show that to them, because there's a way to do that, there's a way to respond to that. 
Um, what else? What do we? Does anyone else have something they'd want to comment on on that? What do we think that looks like? States. I didn't want to get on the mic on that one. Can you imagine what it would be like if every Christian in the United States of America walked down a road peacefully and lovingly and saying, we don't agree with that. Sorry. What that would do. I'm just saying. Do you have, can you help me understand that part? What would, if, if, they, if they did that? We don't agree with abortion, killing babies. We don't agree with taking the Ten Commandments off our schools, our churches, our buildings. You know, I don't know that. I'm just very, very confused about where do we stand in the world to make our point? No, this is not acceptable to my religion and my belief. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that the Bible's clear about how the climate and the the environment will change toward the end times. And God is going to take care of all those people that are doing these things and making these decisions. We have to know that it's getting close. Our time is coming. And we know we know how the how it ends. We win. So that's that's how I, no, but we we can we can do things that are within our control. But there's going to be things that are going to be out of our control that we will not be able to change because that has to happen. Until it's very obvious. Yes, yes, uh, and, and he's right about the America thing. America isn't aligned the way it used to be. We have to stay aligned mm -hmm. with God and let America do whatever it does. I know we can we can vote and we can do things to try to change it, but. There's only so much we can do, and God already said, I will take care of you, and I will take care of them. Um, there's um, something I tell um, years ago. There, um, One of the ways that <clears throat> many people would evangelize, you know, just, just walking up to people and telling them about the gospel, um, which there's nothing wrong with, um, but there, there was a time when much of America was kind of at the same point um, with regards to morality. And so when you had conversations about the gospel, about God, they were, for lack of a better term, very close, you know, in what they believed and how they lived to, uh, you know, to honoring God. And so there wasn't a, a deep um, cavern, so to speak, to cross. Well, nowadays, you can't, if you just walk up and start speaking to someone, um, barring, and I'm not taking any away from the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will just do what he will do. But when you begin to build relationships, you know, you're asking how to do that. It, it, a lot of times it is one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, or in a group setting, because people aren't, you know, Maxwell said it, people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. And that is very, very, very true today. Um, so, you know, and it has to be through relationships, and sometimes that takes time. Um, but I also don't want to discount when you connect with people in those relationships, and you build friendships, and you, uh, you know, pray for those relationships, pray for those people that God will speak to you. That's when the doors open, and that's when the hearts open to respond to that. And there's times to uh, let them know how you believe and how you feel, but I think more and more it has to come from you connecting with someone and, you know, just um, being a little bit for them to trust what you're saying. Because nowadays with the Internet and with the global, um, just the access of information, um, people understand that all these things are not true. Some things are true. They believe in that. But they won't turn away when they see something authentic but it comes through relationship. It can't be just, um, you know, walking up to someone and say, hey, you know, God loves you, blah, 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 whatever. Um, it has to be through building relationships with them. So, uh, Brother Eddie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
relationship thing is a really important part of it because we, we don't understand how much it actually influences. I was talking to a friend today, and he pastors a church in a, in a small town outside of Houston. And he said he was at his church, and he saw a man that had just started, uh, was it a detail business? A, a, a car detail business. And he, he, he just stood there for a minute, and the man drove away, and he said the Lord moved upon him to go hunt the guy down and just walk up to him and say, hey, I pastor this local church, and I saw you, you were just starting, and I want you to know that I'm going to pray for you. And he said after the guy picked up his jaw, because nobody had ever done something like that before, he was flabbergasted. And, and that's how we can, can make those relationships. And you won't, you won't win fighting, but you will win with relationships. And little things, just a, a simple little thing of this guy walking up to a man that he didn't know from Adam and just saying, I'm going to pray for you, you and your business. I'm, I'm, I'm glad and I'm hoping this does well. So the relationship thing is just, folks, it's just crucial. It really is. And each one of us in here tonight and those watching online have the ability to just make marvelous relationships in the easiest ways. I'm going to add to that because a couple just reminded me. Um, so this, um, I take my clothes to the dry cleaner, my shirts, um, because I get tired of ironing. Anyway, um, I take them there like once a week, and I, <laughs> she does. And um, I, I drop them off, and I, I'm just real friendly to them. I'm real nice to them, and just you know, ask them how their day is going. Blah blah blah. Well, you know, now they they have my name memorized. They have my phone number memorized. You know how many people come into a dry clean place? So I'm like, man, that's pretty impressive that they do that. And so I like to think that by my attitude, because today I took him over there and she was noticeably different when I walked in. Like, she's like, oh, and, and it's just simple things like that. So you know what? One of these days I'm going to get say, hey, you know, do you guys go to church? Do you, you know, whatever, and build that conversation, build the relationship with that. The other thing, my boss and I, he's a believer too. Um, we stay at this hotel in Beaumont probably maybe three to four times a year, to be honest. And they memorize both of our names just like that too. But it's the same thing because if you see how people get treated at places like that, if you do something different, it opens up a door for you to just share. And what greater thing to bring joy to someone? I mean, you know, when you see your family, grandkids, kids or whatever, you get home, they're like, oh, you know. And it kind of feels like that when you go to these places because you've built a relationship but then I, I do it because I honor them because they're people. Um, and I was going to talk a little bit about that, too, because it talks about honoring. But I do that also because God's called us to share that faith and to live that out. It's not a faith just for us to grab it and say, okay, I got my ticket to heaven. I'm going. No, it's, it's okay. God saved me, set me free. That's awesome. So, you know what? It's so awesome. I need to share with somebody else. And here we go. And that doesn't mean you need to preach a, a three-point, four-point sermon either. It's just simple little things. And, and when they ask, what is the, you know, why, do you, why are you so happy? Why are you so excited? Why do you seem very pleasant? Well, this is why. And you share about Christ. It's, it's like that. Yeah, but you know what? You're, you're going to talk to people I'll never see. You're going to talk to people that David will never see. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, don't watch the news. No. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yep. All right. Good stuff. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, I think if, uh, do, do I have Matthew on there, Lisa? Yeah. Okay. If you got your Bible, flip over to Matthew real quick. Um, this story um, of Jesus and what he, Matthew 22, um, just one of the things, the ways that Jesus was honoring the, the institution. Um, 22.15 says, Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. And I'm going to stop there for a second. Hey, guys, people are going to try to entangle you in your words 
and again, that's why I say responding in a loving way, responding as they're, they're not targeting you, they're targeting what we believe in that. And so it's a matter of love when they're targeting to pay attention to that. And they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully and you do not care about anyone's opinion for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius, and Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. Um, you know, he basically said, pay your taxes, do what's right, live, live honorably, live truthfully. And, you know, in saying all this and understanding where, um, you know, we all obviously don't like things our government does, whatever, whatever side you're on, we, we don't understand things, we get frustrated with things. We get upset at things, you know, why they do this, why do they do that, why do they take this, why do they say that? But I also, we've got to come back and look to look at ourselves, and, and in that, when we're frustrated, I think sometimes we really make God too small, and we don't think he can help with that. You know, to think that God will honor us, when we do what's right, when we pay our taxes, when we deal those things, when we honor those in authority— we're honoring God by doing those things, and therefore God is going to take care of us in that. And I think sometimes we forget that. We're like, oh, we got to, you know, it's frustrating. Why are they doing this and getting all upset? And I understand getting upset. I'm not saying you can't, but I am coming back to the point of remember that God is in control. You know, we, we lose that. Remember that he's in control. Remember that he's going to take care of that situation. Um, so in, in my, my particular store, we... You know, we get bonuses every year based on a certain type of profit margin we make and, and different things, and, and I'm not going to explain all that. But throughout the year, I constantly have customers that will come in and something's, you know, a shirt's got a hole, this is not the book they wanted, or blah, blah, blah. And I do a return just easy. I'm like, look, no problem, take this, you know, we'll take care of it or whatever. And I'm like, oh, God's going to honor that by me taking care of them and not making a big deal over a $25 thing. Um, you know, and God's going to honor that. And almost every year I have been blessed with a bonus, and I feel because I've honored God in what I've done. And not just got mad at somebody and said, oh, I'm not taking that back or blah, 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 or whatever. Because you should see how many people come in, and you've probably done returns too, where they're like, oh, do you have your receipt? You know, when did you get it? Uh, we can't take that back or whatever. And, and it comes back again to I'm going to honor God with my lifestyle, with paying my taxes, with paying my bills, with paying these things, with my tithe, with all those things. I'm going to honor him, and I'm going to trust him to take care of me. Amen? All right. Uh, another one. Flip over to Romans chapter 13. We're going to see what Paul says a little bit about this, too, because um, I think this is really good, too, and Paul... See, they gave a little subtitle here of Submission to Authorities also. And again, just saying that sometimes. <laughs> anyway, 13.1 says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Did you hear that? <laughs> that one hurts sometimes. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. He is in control. God is in control of what happens. Amen? So we pray and we ask God, help us, God, understand, help us with what we, you know, trying to, to honor those in authority. Verse 2 says, therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. I don't want to be on that side of God. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? 
Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Again, it's, it's not about... It's not about what we, I'd say what we feel, but it's about honoring God in our lifestyle. Man, I want to be in that place, and that's what I want to do. 1 Peter 2.15. Come down a little bit if you're, if that's, all right. 1 Peter 2.15. I absolutely love this verse, okay? Live as people who are free, not using your, oops, I'm sorry, I jumped in 16. I apologize. 15. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. I love that verse. I love it, I love it, I love it. By honoring God and by doing good, that's the will of God that we should do good, and then we put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Guys, our lifestyle speaks volumes loudly, 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 loudly. And when we love people, we win arguments. Because who doesn't, right? Be submissive. Be submissive. It speaks volumes. And again, I have my notes there. It may not be quite as American as you like, but we're Christians first, Americans second. Amen. I know that stings. I put it in my notes. But it's, you know, we honor him, we honor God. Verse 16, let's go down a little bit and try to get through this. Um, Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Again, that, that's, this is the blessing of being in America. We have the freedom to do that, but let's use our freedom to honor him. Let's use our freedom to bring more people to the kingdom. Let's use our freedom to do those things, to help other people out. Again, like I just said, use your freedom to help those that you come in contact with each and every day. Verse 17, um, uh, let me go back to uh, verse 16. But living as servants of God, and actually in the uh, King James, I believe, it talks about living as a bond servant. And I don't have this, Lisa, up there, but if you guys got your Bibles, flip back to Exodus 21. Do you all know what a bondservant is? Fixing to tell you. All right, Exodus 21. You flip over there or scroll down on your phone, whichever you like, or just listen. Uh, Exodus 21.5 says this. But if the slave, um, uh, let me jump, let me start at verse 1, I'm sorry. 21.1. Now these are the rules that you shall set before them when you buy a Hebrew slave He shall serve six years, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he comes in single, he shall go out single. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out alone. But if the slave plainly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him to God, and he shall bring him to the door or the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall be his slave forever. Wow, is right. <coughs> oh, ow and wow, I guess both apply, huh? Um, a bondservant was someone who seeks to do the will of their master at the time, and openly and freely did that. And that's when Peter was using that illustration because his, his particular audience would have known that, would have known what a bondservant is, would have known what a bondservant does and how that is. And, and freedom to obey God, 
that we understand that he knows what's best, what we need, when we need it, how we need it, and if we need it. You know, he knows what we need. Do we really believe that God is God? It's kind of my thing. As, as we commit our lives to him, as we commit to serving him, and again, when you use the term servant or slave, we have very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not confusing, but really con construed kind of ideas of what a slave and servants mean. And I, I did not, I apologize, I didn't take the time to really search all of that up, but it's, I, I don't think it, it I, in fact, I know it's not what we constitute a slave or whatever, but these were people who were serving in households and they were treated right. Now, yes, obviously in any context, there's masters who did not treat their slaves right and did not do that right. And Peter was speaking to that as well. Um, but again, it's they were seeking to do the will of their master. And Peter is saying, as you are a bondservant of Christ, use your freedom to, to live for him. Amen? All right, verse 17. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Uh, honor everyone. You know, when I, when I see this and what I, what I feel like honor is, is respecting who you talk to, no matter who their age, no matter what they are. Um, we, I have even come across, even in, in my industry, which is, you know, it's retail, but it is more of Christian retail. So typically our managers are better, but there's some that still treat their, their people not as well as I would like them to. But I, I got an opportunity to, to share up in Oklahoma City at a manager meeting, and I wanted to share with them that, you know, people around you know things that you don't know. And when you honor them and when you can figure out what they know, then you're going to be in a better spot because there's experiences you have had that I haven't had. There's people that you've met that I haven't met, and there's situations that you've gone through that I haven't. But if I can honor you, get to know you, and get to learn what you say and what you know, I can learn from all kinds of people. I can learn from all kinds. Amen? And, and that's what it means to honor everyone. I, it, you know, it doesn't matter people's positions because we all know it takes every position between sweeping the floor to CEO to president to whatever to run this country. It takes everybody, and that's the great thing about it. But no one thing is more important than the other. God, each person is valuable. Amen? It's a valuable life. Love the brotherhood. That's your church family. Love your brotherhood. That's the church family. That's all of them together. That's, that's people that come into this building. That's taking care of them. Um, Peter was... Peter. Uh, you know, he wanted to remind them that as the group of believers, as they were, to take care of each other, to love each other. That doesn't mean exclude some other people, but that means take care of your family. Take care of your church family that they're. Take care of the believers. Um, show, them, show them love. Show them respect. Fear God. Do we? Do we fear God? And again, when you say fear God, you know, do you get a negative connotation or do you, is that something of a healthy respect and honor? I mean, I think of my dad. Um, I feared my dad, but not in a bad way. I feared him that I would disappoint him. I feared that I would not do what he's asking me to do because I know he loves me because I loved him. And that, that's one of those things that, and the same thing with God. God knows what's best for you, and we can healthy fear, a healthy fear, a healthy respect of God. Amen? And honor the emperor, and uh, that was pretty heavy too. Like I just said, Nero was one of those who was not, um, not fond of Christians, and he really uh, took it to them, so to speak. All right, verse uh, 18 there. <clears throat> Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. Um, I'm going to throw something in there too. Just, you know, as you're, as you're honoring those who, and we may not have masters that are, so to speak, or bosses who are brutal, or maybe we do, maybe we don't. But can I just tell you, it might be difficult, but hey, man, let's pray for your leaders. Pray for your bosses. Pray for those in charge. Pray for those in authority, um, because they need it. God moves. God moves. Uh, verse 18, um, instead of unjust, 
the Amplified Version says unreasonable. Sometimes people are unreasonable. <laughs> Sometimes they are. But again, don't take it personally. Don't take it personally. You know what? Let God take care of it. Let God handle it. Um, we don't want to lose, you know, quote unquote, lose your salvation over an argument with somebody. We want to honor God in how we live, even though, even when it seems unreasonable. Verse 19, for this is a gracious thing when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. And guys, that suffering unjustly, um, it, it's, it, it may not be physical nowadays, you know, it, there may not be any physical issues, but it can be emotional, it can be financial, it can be um, mental, you know, there can be a lot of things that we're facing and struggling with, but sometimes it, it's God just working in our life and getting us, I was telling the ladies at work today, we were talking about, um, oh man, I, I don't remember exactly what we were talking about, but you know, we were talking about growing in your spiritual life. And it's through the struggles, it's through the frustrations that you grow. That's, the, that's where God shows you those things. And so sometimes when you start to get frustrated, we need to just pull back, stop ourselves and say, okay, this is very frustrating and I don't like it. And I'm not saying you have to verbally say this, but tell yourself, this is frustrating. I don't like the way I'm being treated. I don't like what I'm being accused of, but God help me to walk through this and help me to see this and help me to grow from this. Amen. All right, uh, verse t uh, 20. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure? This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. So basically he's saying, um, yeah, if you do something wrong and you get beat and you deal with it, well, okay, you deserve that. What, you know? But if for doing something right, then you're, you're suffering for that. How much more does God receive the honor, and how much more is that is that a thing that he that he would honor because you're doing what is right? <clears throat> All right, uh, verse twenty-one says, "For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in His steps." And for those of you that are familiar with the what would Jesus do um, stuff, this is the scripture that it came from. And if you've never actually read the book, um, it's called In His Steps. It's by Charles Sheldon. It's really, really, really good. And I would say I have it at my store, but I don't. Um, I don't know why we don't carry it anymore, but it's a very good book. Um, I read it years ago, and I actually thought it was a true story. But come to find out, it was actually fictional. Um, but it was several stories about a newspaper editor, about a guy who ran a railroad, and a couple other things. And these, the, the pastor of this church challenged these individuals to really live their lives um, as in following, like, what every decision they made, would Jesus do what this? What would Jesus do with this decision, and how would they live? And, you know, years ago it took on... Um, like a lot of things in America, it takes on a whole fad of itself. And were people really doing it? No, but they were wearing fancy bracelets that said, what would Jesus do? And we still have a few of those at the store. But that is, it, it truly is a powerful scripture. You know, Christ also suffered for us, which means what? And it says, leaving you an example that we're going to suffer um, as he did. And it says, so that you might follow in his steps. And so then... You know, what does that mean every day? What does that mean in following in steps? What, you know, and that's why we read God's word every day. That's why we read the Bible and, you know, those stories in the New Testament of Jesus interacting with people is that's how you respond. Because he jumps into verse 22 and says, he committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. So through his sufferings, through Christ's sufferings, he didn't commit any sin. There was no deceit in his mouth. And it says in verse 23, when he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. And again, it even says there that Jesus entrusted his self to God. What was happening in his life? He was trusting that God, this was ordained by God, and this was set out from the beginning. In Scripture, it talks about it. He was, it was set out from the beginning. In verse 24, it says, He himself bore our sins in his body 
on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. So did you hear that? He died on the sin that we might live, might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Uh, verse 25, for you were straying like sheep, but now have returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. Um, all of this, you know, in Peter and what he's saying is talking about how we can live each and every day to honor God, to honor those in authority, and really to make an impact of where we're at. Because again, like in the beginning, this group of believers, this this the audience that Peter's writing to needed help on how to live. We need help on how to live each and every day. We need, there's new things that come up and you're just, I'm sure all of us can look and go thinking as, as a young person, you know, I could never imagine we'd be facing this today. You know, you just can't imagine that. You can be like, okay, I would have never thought we'd have been facing that. I never thought we would have been doing this or doing that. But again, here we are and but just a quick note to that, I think in Romans, um, Romans chapter 1, right at the end, it kind of says it all. He talks about all different things, but he says we even invent ways to do evil. And I think uh, that's kind of where we're at in America. We're inventing ways to be wrong, inventing ways to, um, you know, go against God and go against authority. And we don't want to be those people. But again, it's by our lives, we will be an example um, just just like that book, and we will follow in his steps, and we will follow what God says. Um, one of the last things here, um, Micah 6, 8, is quite a powerful scripture, but I am going to read it out of the Amplified, and I don't think I have it, Lisa, so I think you probably have the ESV version, but I like the Amplified because it's louder. Nobody got my joke. It's okay. I'm just kidding, sort of. It's really good. So, Micah 6, 8. He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you except to be just and to love and to diligently practice kindness, compassion, and to walk humbly with your God setting aside any overblown sense of importance or self-righteousness. Pretty powerful, huh? Except to be just, to love, and to diligently practice kindness and compassion, and to walk humbly with your God. America says walk proudly. God says walk humbly. It's something, you know, we're raised to be proud of where we come from, to proud of what we do. And there, there is an aspect to that that is true. But guys, it can overwhelm us and it can lead our lifestyles into really turning people away from God. And that's where I'm afraid a, a, lot, of, uh, um, a lot of the church has gone to that. We need to come back to the fact that, you know what, people, you know, when we do the food outreach on, on the Saturdays here, you know, we run across all kinds of peoples. Are we showing them the compassion of Christ? Are we walking humbly with God that they would want to come here and they would want to see something different in our lives? Um, you know, the legacy that I, I would hope we would all want to leave one day is that, you know what, when, they were, when this person was here, when I was here, you know, I honored God with my life and it impacted people around me. Um, because it's such a short amount of time we have, such a short amount of time on this earth, but we want to honor God with our lifestyle. Amen? All right. Uh, any questions or comments? In uh, two weeks, when I come back, we'll talk about wives and husbands. I think I need two weeks to study that. <laughs> no, I'm going to be out of town next week, but um, we're going to continue and, and try to finish up in Peter. Um, but guys, I uh, one last thing. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to comments in a second, but I just encourage you, as, as you read this, as you read your word, you know, asking God, before you even start reading, say, God, what I read, 
help me to grow and show me what I can do to honor you and show me how I can impact those around me, those I come in contact with. Um, you know, because that's, I hope that's your, one of your goals is just to bring people into this kingdom and to, um, amen, you don't get to bring a hearse to heaven, but you sure can bring some people with you. Amen. All right, any other comments? Or Lisa's got a mic if you, I know everyone loves the microphone. All right. Well, is there anything we can pray for tonight, or any praise reports? I mean, hey, I, I'm what? Somebody want to share what God's doing this week? We got a few minutes. Doctor Jean, I have a board presentation next Wednesday, just about this time. So, I like okay. prayers to um, <clears throat> to give me the boldness to speak the truth. Um, I presented to my superintendent uh -huh. this week, and he looked at the data, and we discussed how he wanted the data to be discussed, not <laughs> the way I wanted it to. Okay. All right. Anybody else? I know there's, um, David Cisneros told me he's not feeling well, and I know my wife is home, and I've had some people at the store just sick lately, so I don't know what's what's going around or on or allergies or whatever, but um, we just read, we have been healed, right? Verse 24. I think we should pray for our leaders in our country. I realize that it's really looks bad when you look at the news and you look at the thing that's going on. But the more persecution that we have, it just means we're close, closer to Lord coming back. But I, I think praying for him for any type of mercy or understanding or just making the right decisions is, is what we should pray for. Amen. That's good. Nick, I'd just like to thank the Lord for his protection today. I was walking my three-mile walk around the lake, thinking about everything I had to do and every, you know, going through my mind, and I walked by a copperhead. Cool. Didn't even realize it until I passed by, and he's right there on the sidewalk. But the <laughs> Lord protected me. I'm just so thankful. I know. Ooh. I said, oh, Lisa, you have to pay attention <laughs> where you're walking. Ooh, man. Yep. And he was big, too. <laughs> you know, guys, God, I, I really believe, and I'm sure you do, too. God, when we give him praise, he just, I mean, he's worthy of it. But even small things like that, don't don't take it for granted. Just, you know, it's, it's um, God, God cares about the little things. Amen. All right, well, let's pray. Father, we uh, come before you tonight. Uh, God, I thank you that, that you love us, Lord. I thank you that you take care of us, Lord. I thank you that you love us to, enough to help us through life, to show us what we need to fix, to help us fix those things, and to walk with us through each, each step, Lord. Um, God, you're such a good God, and we thank you for that. Uh, help each one of us to see that, Lord, and help each one of us to live that. Uh, each and every day. Lord, I lift up the needs tonight, Lord, for those that are sick out there, Lord. We pray for health and healing, Lord, whether allergies or viruses or infections, Lord. Uh, God, we just pray for complete healing, Lord. And uh, God, we uh, give you the praise and honor for it. And we ask that, Lord, you touch those lives and you touch those hearts and you touch those bodies, Lord, just to bring complete healing. Uh, Lord, we lift up Dr. Jean in her presentation, Lord, that um, God, your will be done there, Lord, and just give her the, Lord, the platform that she has, Lord, just to honor you, um, Lord, with her lifestyle and with her knowledge, and God, what you've blessed her with, Lord, I pray that you would be with her in that room as she does that presentation, God, and, and they hear what you need them to hear, Lord, and uh, Father, we do uh, thank you for um, safety, Lord, as Lisa said, just thank you for uh, keeping her safe today, Lord, and uh, 
Father, we do lift up our leaders of our country, Lord. God, we pray that you would continue to direct them, guide them, Lord, um, draw them to you, Lord, and just, uh, God, we commit them to you, and we say, Holy Spirit, move. Lord, move upon them, move upon their decisions, Lord, move upon their choices, and that, God, you would just move upon that, Lord, and uh, we believe you for that. And, Lord, I do uh, also lift up those that are um, going on on the mission trip, Lord, um, to Rome, Lord, I pray that you would be with them, and, God, just their willingness to go and to raise the money, Lord, that, um, God, I pray, use them as you see fit, Lord, draw people to the kingdom, Lord, and that you would receive honor and glory and praise. And as they step out and, and go to the other country, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for them going. Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, uh, one last thing, that God, if anyone in here, Lord, is just battling or struggling or, Lord, whatever they're facing, I pray that they would look to you for those answers, God. They would look to you to meet the needs. They would look to you for strength, Lord, whether it's just emotional, financial, spiritual, physical, uh, Lord, whatever the need is, Lord, you're more than able to do that. God, we thank you again for this church and for uh, what you're doing here. And God, we just uh, we, we thank you for it. Uh, we love you, Lord. Go with us this week as we go about our jobs or our tasks or, Lord, wherever our days take us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. God bless you and have a great, 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 great week. I shall. Thank you.